primers, PCR, and mutagenesis. Molecular biologists use primers every day for PCR and mutagenesis. SnapGene helps you to plan and visualize these procedures. Let's start with an example involving standard PCR. This plasmid encodes the red fluorescent protein MRFP1 fused to RAP5. My goal is to amplify the RAP5 gene and then clone it into a similar plasmid encoding the green fluorescent protein ACGFP1. I'll click on the multi-cloning site of this plasmid, then switch to sequence view. There is a BSPE1 site immediately following ACGFP1 in the same reading frame. I'll use this site to insert RAP5. As the downstream site, I'll use BAMH1. Okay, let's go back to the RAP5 plasmid. I'll click on the RAP5 gene, then switch to sequence view. I need a primer that begins at the RAP5 start codon, and I want a TM of about 60 degrees. So I click in front of the ATG and then drag. The indicator says that 18 bases will yield a suitable TM. Now to create a primer, I choose Add Primer from the Primers menu. It asks if I want to make a primer from the selection. I do, so I click the top strand button. There's my primer. The default name is highlighted, and I'll type to rename this primer RAB5.4. Now I'll add a BSPE1 site at the 5' prime end of the primer. I click at the beginning of the primer, then switch to the Insertions tab. I want to add a restriction site, so I click in the second box and type BSPE1. To insert this site, I simply press the second Insert button. The BSPE1 site is highlighted in red and is displayed as a 5' prime tail on my primer. To ensure efficient cleavage, I should add another six bases upstream of the BSPE1 site. I click again at the beginning of the primer sequence and then type the random sequence ACAGCG to extend the 5' prime tail. Now I press Add Primer to Template and my forward primer appears. The reverse primer is simpler because I'll take advantage of the existing BAMH1 site. I click just before the BAMH1 site and drag to select. This time I need to select 27 bases to reach the desired TM. Once again, I choose Add Primer, but this time I make a primer from the bottom strand and I name it RAB5.REV. Okay, now I'm ready to do PCR. From the Actions menu, I choose PCR. My two primers are shown in purple on the map. I click to select the forward primer, then shift-click to select the reverse primer. The sequence that will be amplified is now selected. The default name for the PCR product is Amplified, but I will extend it to Amplified RAB5. When I press PCR, the Amplified product appears in a new window. I see the RAB5 gene flanked by BSPE1 and BAMH1 sites. I'm ready to clone this gene into the ACGFP1 vector. We won't go through the restriction cloning here because that procedure is covered in the restriction cloning video. Instead, let's take a look at site-directed mutagenesis. I'll close the amplified RAB5 window. I want to create a dominant negative RAB5 mutant by changing serine 34 to asparagine. In this case, I need a primer that anneals on both sides of the serine 34 codon. 18 bases on each side should do the trick. So I back up six codons to glutamate 28 and click on this codon. Then I hold the mouse down and drag to phenylalanine 40, which is six codons downstream. The result is a selection of 39 bases. I make a primer by choosing Add Primer from the top strand. Let's call this one S34N.4. I need to change the serine 34 codon to an asparagine codon. When I mouse over serine 34, I see that the codon is a TCA in the middle of the primer, so I'll go up here and select that TCA. Now I switch to the Insertions tab. This time I want to insert a codon, and I'll use the menu to choose ASN for asparagine. The AAT codon is fine, so I press Insert. Now my mutagenic primer is displayed with the new codon as a red loop. I'm going to want a complementary primer as well, so before clicking to add the primer, I'll uncheck this box labeled 
close after adding primer. I click Add Primer to Template. Now I want to make the complementary primer, so I simply press Reverse Complement and edit the name to s34n.rev. Finally, I press Add Primer to Template once again, and then press Close. I'm back in the Plasmid window, which shows my new mutagenic primers. To perform the mutagenesis, I can select either primer. The reverse primer is already selected, so I choose Mutagenesis from the Actions menu. The Mutagenesis window opens, and all I need to do is specify a name for the mutagenized plasmid. I'll call it NRFP-RAB5S34N. Then I press Mutagenize, and a window appears for the new plasmid. If I click over here on the Show History Colors button, I see the mutated codon in red. Let's suppose I'm ready now to order all of these PCR and mutagenesis primers. I'll switch to Primers View to see them as a list. To select all of them, I click on the first primer, then Shift-click on the last one. Now I choose Export Selected Primers from the Primers menu. I'll call the exported file RAB5Primers, and I'll save it to my desktop. The text file is now on my desktop. When I double-click to open it, I see that it shows the names and sequences ready to copy into an online order form for a primer supplier. That's all we have time for today, but please explore the other primer capabilities offered by SnapGene. For example, you can import primers from a list or from another file. And when you simulate overlap extension PCR or infusion cloning, SnapChain will design the primers for you automatically. Thanks for your attention, and enjoy SnapChain.